Okay, uh, now we're on the binomial theorem. We did combinations, and now we're on the binomial theorem. And before we can start the binomial theorem, we need to remember Pascal's triangle. And the triangle went just like this. And I can keep going with it, but I'm going to stop at this row. And the reason why I'm stopping at this row is because this is a 3. Since that's a 3, I know that I'm going to use this row right here, my triangle. That's the row I'm looking for. So pull out your triangles, your Pascal triangles, because that will help you do this. So what that means is I want you to write down a 1, give it a lot of space, a 3, give a lot of space, a 3, give a lot of space, and a 1. And then put multiplication signs after each item. I'm going to show you how easy it is using Pascal's triangle to solve these. You take whatever the first item is. In our circumstance, it's a C. So I write a C down right after everything. And there's a C right after everything. You start at what the power is, the highest power, and that was to the third, so I put a third there, and you go down by one every single time. So that's squared, that's the first power, and that's a zero. Then you take whatever the second term was, and in this case it was a negative 3d. So I take that and put that in parentheses because it's two terms in one, negative 3 and a d and it was a negative 3 and a d and it was negative 3 d okay instead of starting at 3 now we start at 0 and we go up so that's 0 that's 1 that's 2 and that is to the third and there's addition signs in between each group of items So, this is the first group. <coughs> and in that first group, you have a 1. c to the third is c to the third. And all of this is to the 0. Well, anything to the 0 is 1. So all that's gone. So really, all of that just became c to the third. Over here, this is like saying um, to the negative 3 and d and I have a c squared still there, and I have that 3. Well, 3 times negative 3, right? 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. I still have a c squared, and I have a single d there. So there's that one taken care of. This is squared, so that's like saying negative 3 squared and d squared. So that's like saying 9d squared. Well, I still have a c there, right? And I'd still multiply by 3. So 9 times 3 is 27. I still have a c, but now there's a d squared there. So there's that. All gone. c to the 0 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. So really all I have is negative 3d to the third. So I have to take that through. So negative 3 to the third is like saying negative 27. And d to the third is d to the third. And there is your answer. Alright there. And that's basically like you sitting there and foiling it out, which you can do to solve this problem. You can just foil that out and get your answer if you would rather do that. Cubed again, that's the 1, 3, 3, 1 row. So it's a 1, then it's a 3, then it's a 3, and a 1. So we start off with Q, so I'm going to multiply everything here. Uh, by a Q. Q, 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 and Q. So this to the third, that means I start up at three, then I go down. Then this is squared, this is one, this is zero. Then the next is 2R. So times 2R times 2R times 2R times 2r. And instead of starting at q, it starts at 0, then 1, then 2, then cubed, right? And it's
its addition in between all of these, right? So I start back here at the beginning. Anything to the zero is one, so it's one times one times q uh, to the third, so it's q to the third. That's what we get there. This is um, like saying two and r, so two times three is six. We have a q squared and an r, so that's all gone. Um, taking this through, I get a four and I get an r squared, so 3 times 4 is 12. I just have a q, and I have an r squared there. And q to the 0 is like saying 1. 2 cubed is 8, and r cubed is r cubed, so this becomes plus 8r cubed. And there is that one. That was your answer. Um, still doing this, we can use Pascal's triangle, and let me just double check here before we move on. Is there one that's more challenging? Nope, that's the last one here. So, um, that's the one, three, three, one row again. So, so far we've only used the one, three, three, one row, but you can use the other rows. Um, the first item was a G, so I plug in a G first here for everything. So, I've got the G everywhere. And it's a 3, so I start up at cubed, then squared, then 1, then 0. Then the whole next item is a 2h, and a 2h, and a 2h, and a 2h. And it starts at 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. And I have addition signs in between everything. So all that to the zero is like saying one. So g to the third. And that's like saying two h and three times two is six. Still have a g squared and an h. Um, two squared is four and we have an h squared now. And four times three is twelve g h squared and 2 to the third is 8 h 8 times 1 times 1 is 8 and it's h cubed because it's an h uh, to the third power and there is your answer um, so remember to use your Pascal's triangle when you're solving these um, so have that out beside you when you're going over these problems because it will make it ten times easier. But also keep in mind, if you don't remember, you can always FOIL, FOIL.